very good evening to you. It is time to take a look at the business news and my name is Anina Shaban. Now it starts off with day four at the COP29 where the calls for debt cancellation and climate reparations for developing countries are growing at COP29 in Azerbaijan as the climate talks enter the fourth day. Now developed countries are putting up a spirited defense, rejecting any talks of reparation, dismissing the global south's remands as unreasonable. Developing countries say no deal is better than a bad deal. NMG's sustainability editor Zainab Bandati now joins us live from Baku for the latest. Zainab, week one is almost up. What can you say about this? Well, Nina, week one is indeed almost up. We still have one more day tomorrow. But now in the absence of the world leaders, things are starting to get more intense. The hours are starting to get longer and longer. I left the COP site at 8 p.m. Uh, Baku time, which is about 7 p.m. Nairobi time. And I did meet a delegation of Kenyans who were going into a room for negotiations on the agenda, uh, agenda item. And that was at 8 p.m. So they are still going to be there for much longer. So in the absence of the world leaders, now the negotiators get busy. However, the one thing that keeps coming up over and over, over and over with everyone is finance because COP29 has been touted as the finance COP. So this means everyone who's speaking, be it at a podium or in front of the media or in front of the other negotiators, finance is very key to them, particularly those in the global south, poor countries like Kenya. And uh, an, in, an original draft, uh, an initial draft on this uh, finance agenda, they're calling it the new quantified, new quantified, uh, new collective quantified goal on climate uh, finance, which is what they're trying to get out of COP29. And uh, the developing world is looking for $1.3 trillion, which is much higher than the $100 billion that they were promised in Copenhagen. And they say no deal no deal is better than a bad deal so the developing world is not willing to accept anything less than 1.3 trillion dollars and this is money they're looking for adaptation mitigation you know things that will help them withstand the impact of climate change but the developing the developed world on the other hand says come on 1.3 trillion really who do you expect to give you that please be reasonable and the developing world says we are being reasonable you owe us far much more than that what you're asking for so i did have a chat with uh, someone from the developing world who's based in Nairobi, and this is what he had to say. I think that a no deal is better than a bad deal at this COP, because if we're going to accept another cycle of, you know, uh, distractions and delays and tranquilizing drugs that don't really produce the transformation, then we'd rather walk away from these conversations until the other side is ready to have a serious conversation. I think we're actually being very reasonable because the sub-Saharan region of Africa alone is actually owed $45 trillion of climate debt by the Global North. So the fact that we're coming in and asking for $1.1 trillion or campaigning for $5 trillion, which is the, the pay-up campaign that many civil society organizations are pushing for, we're actually being very, very reasonable, given the fact that we've been promised false solutions for decades. This is the 29th COP. It's since Copenhagen, we have 15 years and no delivery of real transformative climate finance. So I think we're very reasonable. It's the other side that is not only not delivering on its responsibility, but it's actually adding additional fossil fuel infrastructure investments in the U.S., in Canada, and the rest of the global north at the tune of $500 billion a year worth of new infrastructure. And, and that means that we're not really serious in terms of addressing the root cause of climate change, which is fossil fuel emissions. So they drop. Well, besides the 1.3 trillion that the developing world is seeking, they're also seeking a complete cancellation of all climate debt that is owed by the developing world and not a, a postponement of this debt. They don't want any repayments. They want complete cancellation. And I know a first draft was uh, came out on this uh, financing agenda. A first draft came out a couple of days ago. The developing world rejected it in totality, so it, it went back to the drawing board, went back to the negotiators. And yesterday, another 
another draft came out. It came out more pages than the previous draft. The previous draft was about four or five pages there. And the new draft is now 35 pages. It's still under negotiations. We still haven't had any words yet, whether or not they've agreed. But some of the things that the developing world wants in that draft is one, an ambitious climate target that sets clear goals and timelines. And this is money that must be paid to the developing world by this certain time period. And they also want this agreement to consider the three key elements of climate action, that is adaptation, mitigation, and adaptation, mitigation, and all the elements of climate change so that the developing world can be facilitated to effectively uh, uh, effectively adapt to the impacts of climate change, Nina. All right, well, thank you very much, Zainab. That's Zainab Wandati in Azerbaijan, Baku to be precise. And I guess it's a pull and push when it comes to the, the needs that the developing world wants. Now, Zainab will continue to be bringing us up to speed in what is going on at the COP29. Moving further, all organizations in the